ghostly greetings and welcome to St. John's. <laughs> Consistory will meet tomorrow evening at 6.30. Uh, we are, they, they are looking, I'm not looking for them. They are looking for two new members to take place, uh, take the place of Nancy and Steve who are going off after their four years. Um, we need two volunteers. Please see Nancy Miller if you are so inclined to help. Also, there is a paid position for a person with financial abilities um, to be St. John's uh, treasurer. Thank you. Treasure. I have a blank there because I could not think of the word. Treasurer. Again, see Nancy Miller if you're interested. Uh, the congregational meeting will be November 14th following the worship service there will be a vote on the proposed budget at that time. Pittsburgh Association is holding a Zoom meeting on November 14th. See Pastor Lisa for details. Kangaroo Closet will be open this Friday from 9 till 1. This Wednesday is practice for bells at 5.30, praise team at 6.30, choir at 7.15. It's the holiday season. It's approaching quickly and is a great time to get involved with the music. Next Sunday is Super Sunday School. Second, 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 Sunday. second Sunday, okay. Second Sunday is Super Sunday School. Confirmation is at 845. Sunday School for those up to fifth grade is at 845. Adult Sunday School at 9 o'clock with Mr. Rich. Jam time is this Wednesday at 6.30, followed by Campfire Vespers at 7. You can find this on your website or on FaceTime, our website or FaceTime. Um, order forms for cookies are in the back for anyone um, that you know of who does not have a computer or not access to um, downloading an order form. So just check it out back there. Um, and there is a person who has a birthday today. Nancy. Nancy Thomas. So I think we could do a happy birthday. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? Nancy. Just wanted to thank everybody who came to our luncheon last week. We did have it downstairs instead of outside. Um, Chip had the idea that we should take a donation up. So we have $100 to put into the current offering this week. Oh, wow. Also, Brad and Amy advertised our flesh colored chairs from downstairs that we were trying to get rid of. Mm -hmm. And Brad sold them all, so I have enough left for $120 wow. from them for the chairs. Wow, so. wow, wow. Good. Wow. That's all good. Great. Yeah. You have to look around, all around, to see if you <laughs> found them all, because they've been <laughs> well, different there places. Well, we still have them. sold six, so we're okay. good. <laughs> okay, is there any other announcements? Okay, up. Oh. I, I do believe we have to turn our clocks back next Saturday evening. Just a reminder. Okay. Um, any other announcements? Okay, then I will leave you with this. I hope you have a beautiful night for <laughs> Halloween and look out for little pumpkins. Let us prepare for worship.
The peace of God be with you. I invite you to share your sign of God's peace. Peace. Now, those who are able, if you'll stand and join with us and find us faithful. pilgrimage of faith in a changing and uncertain world. We remember all those who taught us faith. God of grace by whose love the world exists. Show us your face as we worship and reveal to us your glory. You may be seated. So do you want to wait till next week? It's up, it's up to you. All right.
deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in the darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you, no plague will come near your home. Let's act out that verse. So, can I have your help, please? Sure. Can you be it today? Sure. All right, so I'm going to have you cover it in front, and I need half of you to protect our it by making a shelter. And the rest of you are going to get to throw paper at our possum. <laughs> I invite those who are able to stand and join with me in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Jesus, we confess the difficulties we experience in living as you live and loving as you are. We confess our capacity to be so consumed by our own agendas that our concern for the needs of others shrinks all too rapidly. We ask forgiveness for all our sins, 
Amen. Amen. Hear again the word of truth in Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. God, we do come to you this day as the clouds were around this morning, kind of feeling of that All Hallows Eve sense about us with a little bit of mist. And we think of those things that do scare us, um, those that make us feel fearful. And we are thankful, God, for your protection, for your presence in our lives, for it makes such a difference. We pray for those that we have lifted up today, for those who are hospitalized and on hospice, and those with cancer and their, their battle and continued treatments and struggle with it. We pray for all of those who need healing, for each one that is here today and, and present with us in worship. We lift up the needs on their hearts. For God, you love us so much that you know even how many hairs are on our head something that we don't even know. There are times, God, when we feel unlovable and question our own worth. And those times we need to remember your unconditional love for us and how much we matter to you. Today, we also think about those whose lives have mattered to us, some in very small ways and others in very great ways. We are thankful for their presence in our lives and all that they have meant. We're thankful for those who have shared their faith with us and have taught us about you and our Savior, Jesus Christ, so that in times of difficulty, in times of joy and celebration, that we know that we have a Savior in Jesus Christ who is walking this journey with us and that we are not alone. As we look around the world, we see so many needs, the continued battle with COVID, and we lift all of those who have lost their lives because of it. We pray for their, the continued battle and concern with the healthcare workers. We pray for those around whose hearts are filled with violence and hatred, may your love filter in and through their lives. We pray for all of those in need and the leaders around our world as we continue to see so much. We lift them up, the needs of our world to you, God. Thank you for all of the blessings for the pumpkins and the light that is shining in them, reminding us to shine our light of your love in the world. We thank you for our Savior and pray now as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to ask Diane to come up. Today we are going to light candles and first in remembrance of loved ones from our church family. And then um, afterwards, um, all of you will be invited if you'd like to come forward and light a, another candle and place in the sand for loved ones that you have lost. I'm gonna first light our first candle and we'll light from there um, from the Christ candle because Christ is our light and brings us support and comfort in our times of grief.
We light candles in remembrance of St. John's members. James English. Ada Spitaller. John Camus. Dorothy Gall. And Donald Geiker. We will now sing in the bulb, there is a flower, and those that wish to light a candle for a loved one may come forward.
Let us join together in prayer. God, we give thanks for all the faithful who have shared their lives, faith, and gifts with us. Amen. So today we begin our new worship theme for the next month, Thankful for a Life that Matters. We know that God has created us all in God's own image, so we all matter. We know that. But think for a few minutes about people who have lived a life that matters to you. What words would you use to describe a life that matters? Now, Rich... Somebody that did the best they could. Anyone else? Love. Love. Unselfishness. Unselfishness. Yeah. Faithful. Faithful. Humble. Humble. What? Mom. Mom. Yeah. yeah. Community spirit. Community spirit. Yeah, lots of words that remind us and let us know of what it really means to live a life that matters. Well, last Sunday in Confirmation, we played Bible baseball so that we could learn about some of the people and places, events in the Bible. And after a while of playing, we realized how many stories there were in the Bible really about violence and really weren't what we consider those heartwarming, wonderful stories. <laughs> um, you know, John the Baptist was beheaded, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace, and Jonah was swallowed by the whale. Fortunately, those last couple people, they all survived, but still. Um, so, but yet, um, when I think about the Bible, I'm most um, reminded of people's lives that mattered to so many people. Hebrews 11, we can read about faithful people in the Bible. As, and we think of, and the, as they list, Abel and Enoch, Noah and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Esau, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, Rahab, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the list goes on. But of all the people of who are faithful people in the Bible, today we're going to read about Ruth. And I'm going to begin with the first couple verses about Ruth because there's a lot of names in there that are just hard. So I'll read the first couple verses there um, and then you'll join with me later. So long ago in the days before Israel had a king, there was a famine in the land. So a man named Elimelech, who belonged to the clan of Ephrath, Ephrath who lived in Bethlehem in Judah, went with his wife Naomi and their two sons, Malon and Chilion, to live for a while in the country of Moab. While they were living there, Elimelech died and Naomi was left alone with her two sons who married Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth. About 10 years later, Malon and Chilion also died and Naomi was left all alone without husband or sons. Now we heard that the Lord had blessed his people by giving them good crops. So she got ready to leave Moab with her daughters in law. They started out together to go back to Judah, but she but on the way she said to them, Go back home and stay with your mothers. May the Lord be as good to you as you have been to me and to those who have died. And may the Lord make it possible for each of you to marry again and to have a home. So they only kissed them goodbye, but they struck her eye and said to her, No, we will go with you to your people. You must go back, my daughters, Naomi answered. Why do you want to come with me? Do you think I can sons again with you to marry? Go back home, for I am too old to get married again. Even if I thought there was still hope, 
and so got married tonight, and they had sons, would you wait until they had grown up? Would this keep you from marrying someone else? No, no my daughters, you no. know that's impossible. The Lord has turned against me, and I feel very sorry for you. Again, they started crying. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye and went back home, but Ruth held on to her. So Naomi said to her, Ruth, your sister-in-law, has gone back to her people and to her God. Go back home with her. But Ruth answered, Don't ask me to leave you. Let me go with you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Where, wherever you die, I will die, and that is where I will be buried. May the Lord's worst punishment come upon me, if I do anything that can separate me from you. When Naomi saw Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. Naomi was grieving, grieving and going through a horrible ordeal. Because of a famine, Naomi and her husband Elimelech and her sons were forced to leave to go to a foreign country, the country of Moab, just so they could have food to eat. But they lived there for 10 years. It's a long time to live in another country. Then, Naomi's, in that 10 years, Naomi's husband died and she grieved for her husband, but yet she also shared in the joy of her son's weddings and their new wives. And then her sons died. So Naomi faced a very difficult decision. They were three widows. In their culture, they just couldn't go out and find a job. There weren't help wanted signs all over. So God's law said that people were to leave corners on their fields for the widows, orphans, and poor to harvest so that they would be, have food. You know, farmers are still gleaning today. In this past Tuesday, when we volunteered at the Butler Food Distribution, they had um, baskets of spaghetti squash, and it was, they were from a local farmer. Now, I don't know if he had people come and help glean those or if he had just decided this was his offering to the community and had just given them to be handed out. But I know that um, many of the people who came by to get their food said, oh, good, spaghetti squash. And they were actually looking forward to, to getting it and to be able to prepare something with it. Naomi and her daughter-in-laws were going to face an uncertain and meager existence. Naomi decided that the best decision would be for the women to return to their families. They were young and without children, so their families could arrange for another marriage to take place, and they would then be able to have families of their own. Naomi would return to her family in Bethlehem. That's, it just made sense. Both young ladies wished to go with her, so obviously they loved her dearly. But in the end, Orpah gave in and returned to her family. And against Naomi's wishes, Ruth went with her. Ruth said, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Ruth lived a life that mattered. She mattered to Naomi simply first because of her great love for Naomi. She loved her so much that she was willing to go to a foreign land and to unknown with her. Anytime we show love to another person, we are living a life that matters. Ruth walked with Naomi to Bethlehem. We live lives that matter when we're willing to walk through life with another person. Karen Kimsey House shared, when someone is walking beside us, we have more courage to walk into the unknown and to risk the dark and messy places in our journey, on our journey. When Ruth and Naomi returned to Bethlehem, Ruth went and gleaned the fields for food. And, a, and 
And then as she was gleaning, she met a relative of Ruth, of Naomi's, um, and his name was Boaz. And following the customs of, following their customs, Boaz married Ruth. They did have children and continued to care for Naomi and embrace her as part of their family. Ruth lived a life that matters because she provided care and concern for others. She provided a home for her mother-in-law. And that's what it means for us too, for living a life that matters, is showing care and concern to those around us. As a church, we show care and concern for others in many ways. Living a life that matters is also sharing joy with one another. And I think about the upcoming joy of Thanksgiving. So in the past, um, our Christian Education Committee would have a Thanksgiving breakfast and we would all share joy around the table and we weren't able to do that last year. So instead, we decided to, um, to make up Thanksgiving bags and every family of the church would receive one. And those that were here, we passed them out. And those who weren't here, we had different volunteers from the church to take the bag to whoever whoever it was. So I volunteered to take Jim English his Thanksgiving bag. So I debated about um, calling and I thought, well, it's Sunday, he may have company. I just dropped by and dropped the bag off. So I got there and I knocked on his door and I waited. And he eventually came to the door and he said, oh, I'm sorry, I just got up. I've just thrown on clothes. I don't look very presentable. But he had, not, he had his sweat clothes on. And I said, oh, well, I'm sorry. I should have called first, and I really do apologize. But I have this bag from the church, and I just wanted to give it to you. And it has some pumpkin bread in and pumpkin cookies. He said, oh, my favorite. I'm going to have some. Come on in. So I went on in, and we sat at his table. And then he said, can I get a book out and show you? So then he got out his book about his Navy experience and showed me all about his time in the Navy and we talked about that and really reminded me how he had lived a life that mattered by um, serving our country in the Navy. And then he said, can you stay just a little longer? I have one more thing I wanna share with you. And I said, sure. I'm fine. So he went and he got out and brought over to the table his Bible. And he said, just look through it, Pastor. Look, I have all this stuff highlighted. These are the important verses to me. And, and I, I underlined stuff, and you see. And, and then he went back, of course, he said, but i got to show you this chap, this book. So he went back. Of course, we know his favorite book is Ephesians. And he went back and he says, look, it's almost all underlined and highlighted because I, I liked almost the whole thing. And he said, you know, I try to read my Bible all the time. And, and we then, you know, talked about that and about how much his um, faith was important to him. And then he shared, of course, about his family. And it was evident that, that for him, life mattered because of being able to share it with his children. And he shared some very fun times and, and meaningful times with, with his family. And, and so he, he taught me that living a life that matters is, yes, yeah, serving one's country, trying to be a good parent, and by living out our faith through reading the Bible, through praying, and through trying to follow God's teaching in our lives each and every day. But I also have to add that Jim English, Bob Yon, and Roland Erb meant a, a whole lot to that pew, Some one of the pews in between, yeah, right? Yeah, right at two pews in front of Dawn and Cindy. And, and I know that that pew is lonely today. Um, and it misses them, all three of them. Ada Spitaller lived a life that mattered to so many through the cards that she made. And she sent so many cards to people just to encourage them and to brighten their day. So every time we encourage each other, or smile, or add something to brighten somebody's day. We're living a life that matters. Ada also had a heart for people and for God. She read the Bible as well and prayed for people. She prayed for our church, and she prayed for me. 
She gave me candy when I visited her, which made me feel really special. And then she also said, please take a couple pieces for Rich. And I really tried every time to get him, give him the pieces that she told me to give to him. I think only one time he really didn't get any. I, I tried. Living a life that matters is praying for others and letting them know in even very small ways how much they mean to you. John Camus lived a life that mattered to his son, Tony. He taught Tony how to take care of and how to fix up old cars. He passed on to Tony his passion for fixing up cars. And after graduation, Tony was able to go down to Florida and spend some time with his dad. And they went to some car shows and just enjoyed their time together. Living a life that matters is passing down to others our passions, our loves, our recipes, our knowledge, our wisdom. Dorothy Gall, she lived a life that mattered to me because of her positive attitude and her generous spirit. She was always trying to give something to others, and she taught my sister and I that when life was difficult, we needed to make the best of it. And she was a person of faith who loved and laughed and lived life to the fullest. Now, I will have to say that there was a few times in my mom's life that she really was struggling with um, having that positive attitude. Um, and one of them, was, she was at Presbyterian Hospital. And you know how it is when you're supposed to get discharged from the hospital? Well, she thought, since the doctor came in and saw her at 8 in the morning, that surely by noon she would get to leave the hospital. And then 1 o'clock came, and then 2 o'clock came, and by then she was starting, and she was only get, she was getting anxious because of the traffic. She didn't want me to have to drive through the rush hour traffic. And she said, don't they know we have rush hour to traffic and we don't need to drive through? We <clears throat> well, um, my mom always taught me, also taught me this, and, and showed me how life matters, is that in all things you can find something fun to do no matter where you are or what, what is going on. So we played the alphabet game for about two hours. And I think the nurse saw me getting weary, and so she finally signed the paper herself for discharge. But we won't tell anybody that part. Don Geiker. Donna shared that one of the things he always said was, I always worked for everything I had and never wanted what others had that he had a great attitude and a love for being a father. And I think he teaches us that living a life that matters means having a great attitude and, and working hard and not looking at what others have and wanting that. So as we continue to remember all the saints and to celebrate each life that has mattered to us and continues, those lives that continue to matter to us, let us seek each day to follow the example of Ruth and the example of loved ones in our lives. May we seek to live by living out our faith in our Savior Jesus Christ by loving, caring, encouraging, and helping others along our way. Amen.
For those who are able, please stand and we'll join in our prayer of dedication for our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Generous God, we ask your blessing on these gifts we have gathered today. Lead us to use them in meaningful ministries that share your love with others. Amen. in the love of God, our creator, wrapped in the arms of our graceful and grace-filled Savior, Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. <laughs> 